Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so in the last video, we, we talked about what state is, and I mentioned that properties in state are different. Um, state is when you're dealing with uh, mutable data, meaning data that can change and that needs to be uh, monitored for updates, you would want to use state. Um, any other type of data that is static and doesn't change, you would want to use properties. Now, properties are immutable, so you cannot change them once they've been declared. So um, please keep that in mind. In this video, I want to go ahead and add a component to the previous component that we had created. And um, we're going to show you how to render that component inside of another component. So just like we did before, um, in this particular case, uh, let's go ahead and um, we're going to create the um, actual band component. So let's go variable band equals react dot create class remember it always has a render function And then this is going to be, um, let's see, we're going to do the return like we talked about before. And this will just return an h2 uh, with this.props.name. And then an image. And then once again, um, you can't. These are two siblings to each other, so you have to have that wrapped in a in an outer outermost div, or at least um, some sort of outermost content uh, block. All right, and now you'll notice that these are referencing this dot props, and props get passed into the component from the parent. So in order for that to happen, what we're going to do is we're going to have this band component underneath uh, this event here. We're going to actually have it render a uh, a band component here, just like we did with this on our React render. So let me go ahead and, and demonstrate that. This is going to be band. And now, since this thing is referencing properties that aren't there, that's going to be a problem. So it's looking for a name and an image property. So since we're referencing uh, this band component that we just created, we need to go ahead and add those properties in there. So we're going to say name equals, for right now, let's just say um, base side and then image equals, and then this should be like a link to an image. Um, for right now, I'm just going to, actually, you know what, hold on a second, let me get an all right, so I'm just going to point an image to the lead singer of Bayside since that's the only band that we have in our database right now. And you can see here that this is an actual band component. So let's go ahead and uh, and take a look at what we got going on here. So you have the title and the image that was passed down to it based on those properties that we just um, defined. So if you look at this element here that got displayed, this is part of the uh, band component here that got declared with um, the H2 that we defined and then the image. And the data that was passed to it was passed from its parent, which is located up here and where you can see that we had the inline style object that we had attached to it. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, you could have you know, tons of elements and things like that, but you basically define your templates and you pass in the data. If the data doesn't change, then you can just use props. If the data is going to change, you want to use state. And once again, this image and all that stuff didn't have to be re-rendered because of the component changing. The component had an internal component that was um, listening to its state and it didn't have to re-render this stuff which is pretty cool so it makes your page very responsive and um, very awesome when it comes to making dynamic stuff 
All right, so most of the time, though, you're not going to pass static data in like this. You're actually going to be passing, you know, like JSON data or something like that. So, like, if in most cases, you're going to call an API, and we're going to get into that in a different video. But for right now, let's go ahead and just say variable uh, bands equals, and this is going to be an object where we have a bunch of stuff. So we're going to have name, base i, image, Um, so I went ahead and I just created some fake uh, JSON data, and this actually should be in square brackets. So this is just a uh, JSON list of um, individual uh, objects here that are defined, so it's three different bands. And if we wanted to iterate through that, and normally, like I said, this would be coming from like a JSON call, returning a bunch of um, JSON data that we'll get into in a different video. But if we wanted to go ahead and um, render this like in a list, in a for statement, then we can do that. Uh, but since we're calling JavaScript code, we have to actually do that inside the curly braces, like I had showed you before. And the way I can reference it is I can actually reference it with its um, global name up here under bands. And I can say bands uh, dot map and function, and we pass in band. And then we can actually do the same thing. Um, we're going to copy in this band object. And instead of referencing this static data, we're going to reference um, band.name. And this is band on image. In fact, um, this needs to say this dot props dot bands dot map. And you're going to notice that right now there is no that would actually give you a null reference error because there is no props. And in order to actually get the data to the band component, what we need to do is we need to give it a variable just like we did with the band. We're going to say bands equals bands. So we define the, the bands in the global namespace up at the top, and we just pass it into the band component. Since the data um, doesn't need to be changed, it doesn't need to subscribe to its state or anything, so we just want to reference that as properties. So we pass it in as a simple data object, and then we reference that as a property um, that was passed in. And hopefully this will work. Uh, and I did some sort of typo here. Oh, um, yeah, I actually broke my rule that I've been telling you guys about forever with uh, the curly braces. Um, this needs to be a curly brace. I knew I was going to do that. Alright, and the final thing that we need to do now that we've passed in the bands to the con component and we're iterating through it, uh, we actually need to wrap this in a return. So this is standard JavaScript and it's calling this, um, this separate React component and it's passing in the data for each band. So anyway, once we wrap that into a return and we upload this, it'll iterate through each band inside the JSON list there and show the bands inside. Alright, so it's pretty cool. And um, we're going to wrap up this video here, but that is the basic explanation of properties. Properties are passed down from parent to child. Child references them. Properties don't change. If they do need to change, then they need to be stored in state. And 
I probably should have said this in a previous video, but if you're wondering where state should be stored, um, typically you want to do most of your state manipulation in the outermost c component as possible. So um, you, I try to keep it all within the the top parent component, and then just pass pass it down through the children as needed. But uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and in the following videos, we're going to touch on how to actually connect to our database and pull that information down via an AJAX call and render the components from the JSON uh, from the server as opposed to static data typed into the the source code. Alright guys, thanks for watching and please subscribe. Bye.